go. Today is the 15th of Shvat, and in every month, the 15th day of the month is the time when there is the full light of the month. Um, just like the moon is full on the 15th, so too there is a full light, the spiritual light of the Jewish people as connected to that energy of that month. So as we learned a few weeks ago in Rosh Chodesh, we learned that the energy of the month of Shvat is about spreading the Torah and the innermost parts of Torah everywhere. We learned that it was on the, it was on, um, the um, first of Shvat, the Moshe Rabbeinu translated the Torah into all languages. And it wasn't just on the first day of Shvat, that's when he began translating the Torah. But that means the whole entire month of Shvat, Moshe Rabbeinu was was busy translating the Torah the whole entire month. Uh, so that means that the whole month is, is connected to this theme of translating the Torah. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu have to translate the Torah? They translate the Torah because the, there is going to be a Jew somewhere who is going to learn the Torah in a different language, and he may feel like this isn't the real Torah. I'm not really getting it. This isn't, this isn't God's words. And therefore Moshe Rabbeinu himself translates the Torah so a Jew should know wherever they are that this is, they are connecting to Hashem in the same way that another Jew is. So this means that the Torah was completed obviously before the cycle his life was over. I mean, obviously before his life was over. So that's a good question. Exactly what part of the Torah did he translate? What yeah. part did he not translate? Right, 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 so it wasn't right. finished or was it finished? It's a good question. I, I don't know the answer. Okay. There are other similar questions that the, the, it says in the Torah, he took the whole Torah. It says that in the, in the Torah, and the Torah hasn't been finished yet. So there is that discussion about what exactly that means. But um, bottom line is, is that the reason why this happened in this month is because this month is um, the month of Shvat. What's the month of Shvat about? So this is the 11th month of the year, and it's connected to the 11th child of Yaakov, Yosef. And what, what's the energy of Yosef? When, when Rachel gave birth to Yosef, Rachel said, may God give me another child. She wanted to have one more child. The Tzedek explains that what she really was asking for, that her child should be someone who was able to help someone who feels like they're a stranger, to help them feel like they're really God's child. Bain acher, bain means child, acher means a stranger. May God give me a child who could help another Jewish child feel that he's not a stranger, that he is God's child. And how um, do we see this in this month? That's the idea of Moshe translating the Torah for the purpose of helping all the Jewish children throughout history feel Jewish when they're learning Torah in a different language. And this is connected also with the anniversary of the passing of the previous Rebbe, which is in the month of Shvat, and his name is also Yosef, and his life's mission was also about spreading the Torah, and uh, the Torah reaching every single, every single place. So, the, that's the energy of Shvat. Mm-hmm. Then the 15th of Shvat is a full revelation of the, this month. It means we, this, today is a day when we are fully empowered to do this mission. That Hashem is giving us the full revelation of the month of Shvat and the full empowerment to spread the Torah in every place and to help all Jews feel that they, that they belong. There was um, another occasion that was speaking about the, um, how this connects to the New Year for Trees. Um, a, a, the Gemara says that if a Tamil Chacham, if a Torah scholar, is a fruit-bearing tree, if he's giving up good fruit, then you can study from him. But if not, don't study from it. So that means the specific element in Judaism that a tree is connected to is it's connected to um, studying Torah. But not just studying Torah, studying Torah in a way that it bears fruit. In other words, not just you're studying Torah. You're studying Torah, and you have in mind when you're studying Torah that you want this to have an effect on you. Like Yankel. Yankel asked his friend Shmerel, the Shmerel, I have this fruit store. I want to sell my fruit. What should I do? So uh, Shmerel says, you need, you need to announce that your fruit comes from Jerusalem. And the answer is fruit comes from Jerusalem, all of a sudden, wow, everyone wants to buy his fruit. But uh, Shmerel says, I have a better idea. And now it's your fruit comes from the Western Wall. Western Wall, okay. He now says, this fruit comes from the Western Wall. All of a sudden, you see Shmerel the next day. Shmerel, terrible idea. People pick up the fruit, they're looking at it, they're kissing it, they're putting it back. <laughs> so, so the idea of, of, of the 15th of Shvat is you're studying Torah in a way that it bears fruit. That you, when you study Torah, you're hearing God speak to you, and you, and you want to know what exactly is Hashem telling me that I need to do that's going to move me to a different place. Studying Torah in a way that it bears fruit. 
So, um, so the empowerment of the 15th of Shvat is not just to uh, study Torah ourselves, we're studying Torah in a way that it, it affects us so much that we share it with others. And this is also connected to the um, Torah portion of just read, the Torah portion of uh, Bashalach about the man. The man was a godly food, and it con- it's connected to the innermost parts of Torah. The um, their regular bread is connected to um, the revealed parts of Torah, and the inner part of Torah is connected to the man. How so? Although the man um, was was a, a physical food, it remained godly. How did it remain godly? That when you ate the man, you didn't have to go to the bathroom. There was no excrement. There was nothing. There was no psalus. There, no, there was no part of the man that didn't get absorbed by your body. So it, it, it was a godly food. And it remained holy and godly even while it was consumed in your body. It didn't change. It didn't lose its godliness and holiness despite the fact that it was absorbed in your physical body. So in a similar way, when you take the Torah and you share the Torah with another Jew, you might say, well, this, I'm, I'm bringing the Torah down. I'm bringing this Torah into a different language. I'm explaining the Torah in a way that this person can understand. I'm, it sounds like it's not so much the... Uh, one gentleman asked me this week to give a, a, a Torah class for Israelis. He says, Rabbi, I like your classes, but when you do it in English, it's just not the real Torah, you know, right? It's not, <laughs> not the real Torah. You have to, like, so, so that's the, not true. And not only is not true, but even innermost parts of Torah, and even the innermost parts of Torah is being carried to a Jew who is, uh, uh, it, it, is, it seems that he's not connected to his Judaism, it still remains the holy manna bread. So this is, there's two points over here. One point is, the manna bread was eaten by wicked people too. As the Talmud says, that there are different verses about where the manna bread fell. Did it fall on your doorstep? Did it fall a little away from your doorstep? Did it fall far away, far, far away from your home? Uh, did the manna bread fall as ready to eat? Did it fall as, as seeds that need to be um, grinded and crushed and, and then uh, baked? Did it fall as loaves, as, as dough? What exactly was it? The Talmud it says very clearly that there were three kinds of people that ate the man. There were the righteous, there were the average people, and there were the wicked. And they also ate the man. And although they ate the man, it didn't stop being man just because it was consumed by the wicked. It still remained man. So that means it's just, it still has its pristine, godly quality as it's being transferred to this Jew who, who, is, who feels estranged from his Judaism. It, it has the same effect. And so, too, in ourselves, we have the part of ourselves which is holy and godly, the neshama, and we have the part of ourselves, as the Gemara says, there are three things that a person is similar to an animal. So when you learn Chassidus, and enter the most parts of Torah, the power of the Mantra Shvat is, the power of the fifteenth of Shvat is, that not only should you learn the Torah in a way that you understand it and make sense to you, but it has to affect every part of your life, even the parts of your life which seems to have no connection to it. Just like the man didn't have any, you don't have to go to the bathroom after you eat the man, that means it affected every part of the body, so too the um, spiritual effect of, of the innermost parts of Torah is something that has to, that resonates in every part of ourselves. In chapter 5 in Tanya, the Altar Rebbe says that the reason the Torah is compared to, um, to bread is because there's a wondrous unity you have with your Torah study. Just like when you eat food, the food becomes one with you. So too when you study Torah, the Torah study becomes one with you completely. Although it becomes one with you completely, it doesn't lose its godliness, it doesn't lose its spirituality, it doesn't lose its holiness. It still remains godly and holy even while it's inside of you. And therefore it has the power, this, the, these wellsprings have the power to lift up every part of ourselves, even the most mundane things. As the Torah says, In all your ways you have to know Hashem. All your deeds should be for the sake of heaven. So although it's my deeds and it's my ways and it's maybe something that I'm doing that's similar to an animal, I'm eating, I'm drinking or something else, so the, the, the impact of the, inner, the most parts of Torah is in a way that it, it lifts that part also. Questions like this. Though. The 15th of the month is the highest point of the month. What happens now? The 16th, the 16th of the month, the Torah says it's supposed to always, always go, supposed to go higher and higher and holier and better and better and better and then comes the 16th of the month, and there's less light, the 17th less light, 18th less light. So how, can we, how come the, the, the month is arranged in a way that we uh, go from the lowest uh, from the, to the highest, and then again back from the highest to the lowest? 
The answer is like this. The second half of the month, the, the diminishment of the light of the moon is about our just like, just, like, just like the light of the moon is getting smaller, so too we say in our prayers, let my soul be like dust before everyone. We're, we're asking Hashem that we should feel humble. We should feel, we should feel humble before Hashem. That's the idea of the, of the, lessening, the lessening of the light. They don't feel that you're accomplishing as much as you're meant to accomplish. You feel that there's a lot more for you to do. You're not, you're not fully bringing out the, the uh, light in you in, in the best way. There's more to do. And this feeling of, of diminishment, of, of that you're not the best, is something that increases throughout the month. The 16th, the 17th, as the moon gets smaller and smaller, the, 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 this feeling of unworthiness, or maybe that's not the right word, this feeling of uh, humility before Hashem gets bigger and bigger. As the moon is like it's smaller and smaller, what's getting bigger is, is our closeness with Hashem. Our feeling of, of reverence and closeness and intimacy and abnegation before Hashem. And that's why the next line in our prayers is, Sach li sach, let my heart be open to your Torah. How does my heart be open to your Torah? It's through the verse before, through my soul being like dust before all. The Gemara says, the Torah is compared to water. Why is it compared to water? Just like water flows from a high place to a low place, says the Gemara, so too the Torah can only be found by his can be found by someone who considers himself to be so so high, so so, so haughty. So the second half of the month, the idea of the moon's light getting smaller, it, it, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to spread the Torah less. Every day is supposed to spread the Torah more. As Moshe Rabbeinu spent the whole month of Shvat, Shvat translating the Torah. What it means is, is that there's supposed to be a, a lessening in this in the arrogance and the haughtiness and in, 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 the, in the feeling that you are doing, uh, that you are the full, uh, you are the uh, does all and ends all. And that is how we get to the next month. Because the, as the moon gets smaller and smaller, right before the new month, what happens? The moon it becomes completely invisible. That means it's become completely, that, that represents, this is a state of absolute abnegation before Hashem. And only then can there be the new light. The new, on the first day of the month, when there's the middle of the Vanu, when there's new light of the moon, that, that represents is that Hashem is able to give a new revelation, which is incomparably greater, to the month before. And then that light develops more and more and more and more until the 15th of the month. And then at the 15th of the month, again, there is this, the service of Hashem, of abnegation, more and more and more until the third month comes and there's able to be a new revelation, a new light. So this month is about this ability to share the Torah, and especially the innermost parts of the Torah to all Jews. And it's especially related to the word Sibur. The word Sibur a community is an acronym for three words. Sadikim, Beninim, Rishayim. The righteous, the average, and the wicked. In order to have a community, you need to have the wicked. It doesn't work without the wicked. So, um, as the Gemara says, that in the spices, in the incense, there were some spices that were very foul, foul smelling. And the Gemara learns from this, in order for the Jewish people's prayers to be accepted, they need to have people there that are foul smelling. So if someone comes in the shul and doesn't smell good, oh, Thank God, Baruch Hashem. Now your prayers can be answered. Someone was complaining last week. This guy came in and he smelled so bad. I'm thinking, wow, we made it. We're in the big leagues. Our <laughs> prayers are all going to be an- <laughs> our prayers are all going to be answered. So, um, so the so so the word Sibur has Sadak base and Reish, and then there's a letter Vav in the middle of that word. What's a letter Vav there? So the letter Vav is a connecting letter, and the shape of the letter Vav, the Zohar says that its shape indicates the truth. Why does its shape indicate the truth? Because just like the letter Vav flows from above to below, so too truth is something which is true in every place and every time. It flows to all places and it remains true. That's why the word Emes, we know, has the first of the Hebrew alphabet, the middle of the Hebrew alphabet, and the end of the Hebrew alphabet. Truth is something that's everywhere and every place the same. It doesn't change. So in a similar way, when the Torah reaches someone who you think is smells bad, let's say, spiritually, physically, whatever it is, you should know that it's the same pristine Torah that is by the tzaddik and is by the benini. On the contrary, where do you see the truth of Torah? You see the truth of Torah specifically when it reaches a Jew who is foul-smelling spiritually. Then you see how this is the real, that this is the Torah of truth and it reaches every place and every person. This is why when um, the letter Vav is also connected to redemption. 
there is a verse in which Eliyo Anavi, uh, the one who was supposed to bring us the tidings of the Gil, the tidings of the coming Mashiach, there's a verse in, in where it's written, the last verse of the, of the Tanakh, I think, it says, Eliyo without letter Vav. Hashem says, I'm going to bring Eliyo Anavi, and he is going to bring the, the hearts of the children close to the parents, and the hearts of the parents close to the children. And as um, Siddhas explains, now before Mashiach comes, it will be the children that will bring their parents closer to Hashem, and, and vice versa, parents will bring their children closer to Hashem. And so in that verse, Eliyahu's name is written without, without the letter Vav. Why is the name without the letter Vav? So it says that Hashem told Eliyahu Navi, you got to do this mission. And Eliyahu Navi was like, okay. Hashem says, no, I want collateral. Collateral? Yes. Hashem took the letter Vav away from Eliyahu Navi, and I'm holding on to this until you tell the Jewish people about the coming of Mashiach, until you announce that uh, the shofar is going to be blown, and the belly space is going to be built, Jewish people are going to be gathered in Israel, I'm holding on to your Vav. So that means the coming of Mashiach is when Hashem returns the letter of Vav to El Yonavi. That means that the coming of Mashiach is about the letter of Vav. What does the letter of Vav have to do with the coming of Mashiach? What is the Because the, what is the Vav again? Vav is, the, the Zohar says, Zdo Eis Emes. This is a letter of truth. What's the meaning of the letter of truth? It's about bringing the Torah to every Jew, not just the Torah, but the innermost parts of Torah, and bring them to this Jew in a way that although it seems like, like the Torah is being adulterated and changed, Rabbi Simon Jacobson, he, uh, he told a friend of mine that uh, you have to make the Torah relevant to people. And he says what he does is he uses uh, words like connection or... And he's using, he's using other words, not just words in English, but he's using words which are, uh, which are very um, popular and people connect with. The word connection, whatever. And he says that the mitzvah is a connector. If they get into touch with a connector. He doesn't use the word mitzvah. So whether you can agree or disagree about with the, without that system, the, the, the idea of it is, is that you want to make the Torah relevant to a person. And you bring it to, into a language, not just in English, but in a language that makes sense to them. And although you're doing this, you shouldn't think this is a lesser Torah. This is not, on the contrary, that's the Torah of truth. The Torah of truth is able to reach every person in their, in, their, in their experience, in their language. So bottom line is, what we learned today is like this. The month of Shvat is about spreading the Torah everywhere. The 15th of Shvat is about the full power that Hashem gives us on this day to do more in this arena. And spreading the Torah means two things. Number one, it means spreading the Torah to ourselves, every part of ourselves, so that the rest of our day isn't just something where we're kissing the fruit, but that the fruit, but the wellsprings of Torah are spreading to every part of ourselves that we're eating and drinking, and, and the, 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 we feel the Hasidus, the Hasidic warmth in the most mundane, most earthy things. And number two, it's about spreading the, the, the innermost parts of Torah to someone who you think, like, well, this person will never have any connection to this stuff. No, it's about taking, taking the innermost parts of Torah and realizing this is the truth. And if it's the truth, that means it has relevance to everybody. And I can bring this to another person. Not only can I, but I definitely need to and should because this is what Mashiach is about. Mashiach is about the wellsprings of the Baal of reaching everywhere. Mashiach is about El Yol Navi getting back his letter of love. Mashiach is about the light of Hashem reaching the physical world the way we see God's presence in the physical world. As I was actually listening to include something I, saw, I learned yesterday, which I never learned before. Um, listening to a talk of the Rebbe, actually, from 15th of Shvat, 5745, that was speaking about a verse, it says in the verse, the glory of God will be, will be uh, revealed, and all flesh will see that the mouth of Hashem is speaking. So, so ordinarily, um, the way Chassidus translates this is, that when Mashiach comes, the same way we see phys- physical things, our eyes will see godliness. It's not that our, we'll get these new glasses, it's not that, 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 that we'll have different kind of sight, but the way we see physical things, we'll see, um, we'll see godliness. Actually, I've said that's the reason why your eyes will heal first. The first thing that will heal in ourselves is our eyes because our, we're going to get this new spiritual um, sense of sight that's going to affect our physical sight. But beyond that, the Rebbe said in this, in this discourse that we won't need to look to see God. Baroque Obaster means all flesh will see. Our physical flesh will sense godliness. Our flesh will see godliness. Now, nowadays our flesh can't see anything, but maybe it's connected to the idea of like, you know, some things you like feel in your flesh, that's like vivid, it's true, it's real. 
Um, of some relatives or whatever, it's about to rain, they feel in their bones, like they, 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 they change in the, right? So you reach yeah, a certain, a, uh, what's it called? Rheumatism? Rheumatism yeah, or arthritis. Rheumatism. So they feel in their bones, they change in the weather, they feel in their bones. When Mashiach comes, the opposite, in the good way, we're going to feel godliness in our bones. So the way we get there is by learning chassidus. Not just learning chassidus in a way that just like it remains chassidus, but learning chassidus in a way that it becomes part of you, you understand it, and you're animated by it, and it actually affects the rest of the day. So that whatever you're doing gets permeated with that, with the, with the manna bread. Chassidus is compared to the manna bread. So you ate the manna bread this morning, that's what we just did. Now take the manna bread, and they're just saying, and, and let this manna bread become part of your flesh and blood, Make, let it become part of who you are, and share that with every person you can, and uh, that's what Mashiach is about. The gong is being revealed in the physical world. That's what the 15th of Shvat is about. That's it. Not just you're a tree, but you're a tree that bears fruit and you have an impact and you uh, make it happen. All right. That's all for right now. God willing, we have a ring tonight. Hopefully, like a is going to host it. To be continued. Good yantif, good yantif.